How close is my arse to the water? Very, but we're good. Today, you're joining me on the banks of Shearwater Fishery once again, where I was hoping to get a bend in the rod. So I'm actually testing these rods as well today, but that's not what the purpose of this video is. We're talking about my new reels, but before we talk about them, please do make sure you're subscribed to us and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future uploads and also follow us on all the different social media platforms coming up on your screen right now. But new kit, despite popular belief, we do actually have to send quite a lot of the stuff back to manufacturers or we do them with giveaways and that. But every now and then we get to have our own kit and that's exactly what these reels are. So a massive thank you to Daiwa. I needed some long distance casting reels to go with my new 13 foot, three and a half pound test curve distance rods, which were the custom builds from American Tackle. If you haven't seen that video, then check the link in the description below and have a look at that. We went through the whole build process, building some bespoke distant rods for me. But the only thing I didn't have was some really dedicated distance reels, which is exactly where these come in, which are the Daiwa Whisker, 45 SCW QD OT. I think that's all the abbreviations. Daiwa love to stick an abbreviation in the name of their reels. And I've come to realize that over the years and I think I've just nailed that first time. So let's try and go through what each one of those things are. So the whisker, it doesn't have whiskers. That's just the name of the sort of that reel. You've got several different reels in the whisker umbrella. I've got a little uh, whisker reel. I think it's the, I can't remember the name of it, the gold spool one from my surface fishing setup. Absolutely love that reel. It's amazing. And this is just obviously a lot more of a beefed up version, different colorations and everything. And they're lovely, lovely reels. The SCW stands for slow cross wrap. That's in relation to how the line actually goes onto the spoil, spool, spoil. Spoil is what I am right now, because when you reels, but onto the spool. So reeling back in, it's got a nice slow oscillation, not ultra slow that it's slowly going up, slowly back down, because that can actually have an adverse effect on casting distance because the line kind of builds up on itself and doesn't have, it sort of sinks in rather than crossing over the top of each other. So the slow cross wraps, it's slow enough then you get a nice line lay, but you're still fast enough that you've got a bit of a wrap and it crosses over the line underneath it. That way it doesn't bed into the spool, it sits on top. So when you come to cast, rather than it pinging off the line underneath, it peels away from it nice and easy. That's the best way to describe it. So that's the SCW. The QD or QDM this one has is relation to the drag aspect of it. So on the front, it's a single clutch sort of system. It's on the very front. You go from really loose like I've got it at the moment, although they're not spinning because nothing seems to come along. And then half a turn or three quarters of a turn, I think it is, goes to a lock solid. So it's not the most sensitive they've ever had. I've had some diver reels before where it was pretty much a half turn and you went from free spool to absolutely lock solid. This isn't as sensitive as that, which is something I actually quite like. I've used some in the past where I found it was too much for me and I was going from lock solid to free spool too quickly and I couldn't quite fine tune the, the drag. But this is a lovely balance so far i've not had a fish on them but just from testing it and getting the clutch set perfectly it seems like a nice balance so yeah three quarters of a turn from lock solid to running really freely is how the qdm works the ot is stands for one touch now that's in relation to the handles as you can see i've never really been a tartu person i've normally spaced out my rods to fit all my rods in but this has a folding reel function or reel uh, handle function so it'd be silly not to use it. It's a nice little setup. If I went too wide, it might be a bit wobbly today because I'm in the uh, lake bed itself just because it's so shallow here. And if I went too wide and I picked up a rod, it started to lean. So that's my excuse for having the rods quite close together. But I haven't folded the one on the end, which some of you uh, will be glad to see because I'm pretty sure some people still fold the end one. So how it looks, don't see the point. You don't need to fold the end one. It's exposed, there's nothing to the left of it. But anyway, that's just personal preference. Of course I could space this out and it would absolutely be fine. But yeah, the one touch OT stands for the actual reel handle itself. So that's pretty much all the basics. But the reason I got these reels were for distance casting. Comes with multiple different spools. This is the standard one, the 45. is That's what the 45 stands for, a 45 millimeter spool. And this is holding, I think 300 meters of line. I've got the quarter long cast line. So that's the, I think it's 35 pound tapered down to 15. And if anything, I'm finding I may actually re-spool up some of the other spools or the spare spools that comes with with the, the, the tapered line again, but down to the 12 pound, because although I'm fishing 
comfortably at this range of fishing about 100 yards today and I was using this the other day casting these rods just a bare lead around 130. I did still find that 15 pound line was slightly too thick to go much further than that with these rods. Now these rods will be in a separate video, it's actually the Korda Kaizen rods, very very capable, really enjoying using them but that'll be in a separate video. But pairing it up with this you can see how neither of them are holding each other back. They're distance rods with distance reels and of course I will be pairing these up with my 13 foots eventually but I am filming these rods as well today. So yeah, that's the only thing I'd change probably is I might go to a different diameter line on the tapered setup just so I can get those few extra yards because if I'm using these on my 13 foots I want to be hitting more than well if it's 100 yards today with with baited rigs I could go further bare ladders hitting 130 but I think if going down to the 12 pound line with a tapered line I could easily hit 140 150 maybe and that's the sort of distances I'm wanting to be achieving with the longer range fishing I want to be doing so that's the only thing I'd change and talking with spools, there are several different spools available with these or comes with them. You've got deeper spools, ones that hold something like 700 metres of lines. If you're doing massive distance work, of course you're not going to be casting that sort of distance, using bait boats or boating your rigs out and putting them out. It's good to know that they've got spools for these reels that will hold that amount of lines. If you want to fish at greater range, you can do. And then retrieval, butter smooth. They really are really nice bits of kit. I've been casting loads today and the other days testing the rods out when uh, I had them all in up here just doing a bit of casting getting some b-roll and it's great to feel how capable they were in casting the distance but of course you need to retrieve them quite well as well. That's a bit of an overview of these these reels. There's obviously a lot more you can find out about these reels if you go onto the, the Daiwa website or if you want to pick some up. I think they look amazing as well. They're kind of a, a graphite grey in places then a matte black in else, other places and they've also got the red whippings around the reel handle and a bit on the spool itself and on the very top and that's the tarty aspect of me coming out because my custom rods have red whippings so it's going to tie in beautifully whether they do anything for me i'm not sure but at least they'll look good in the process doing it all for the gram how sad is that but uh, yeah that's the basics of these reels so it's a bit of an overview but these are going to be my personal ones so maybe in a year's time or so i'm going to do a long-term review see how i've got on with them throughout the year put them through their paces and if they do really help me fish at greater distances but yeah if you're uh, liking the look of these and you've, you've seen some other diver reels from the trade show i did a couple of months ago these are definitely worth a look i think they're around the 250 260 mark maybe slightly wrong but uh, as i said massive thank you to diver for sending these out to me to give them to me for usage over the next year or so really look forward to putting them through their paces so for more information as i said do go over to the diver website and check them out or some of the other ones that they've got in the range as well the cross casts and the emblems and things i've always used diver reels for a very long time none of them have let me down i just wanted some dedicated long distance ones i'm rambling now i was hoping that in this whole time one of those would have gone off but they've not done anything all morning and for the start of the afternoon sun's still up so as long as there's still sun in the sky there's still a chance hopefully something goes off before i leave that's it for me i'm going to probably move the seat because i'm starting to wonder if it has actually splashed up on my bum oh it's a little bit wet that's why you don't put a seat in the lake <laughs>